Hello, uh, my name is uh, Stefan Gez and I'm the CTO of Dalet. And um, I'm going to talk today about uh, FEMS, which is an industry initiative. Uh, basically, FEMS, uh, who benefits uh, from it and why. So if I look at the um, state of our industry today, and especially from the perspective of uh, um, deploying a media project, any IT-based media project requires a lot of integrations typically uh, with many systems, and it's always, often, almost always, a pain point with unexpected uh, difficulties. At the end, there are too many um, systems with proprietary interfaces, and as the result of that, it makes uh, solutions uh, very complex and costly to deploy and to maintain. This is a problem uh, for broadcasters and media companies, and for us vendors. So as a media asset management vendor, we, have, uh, we know the problem, um, and let me explain our perspective. Um, Dalet is a leading provider of media asset management solutions. Uh, we have um, three software-based platforms, uh, Galaxy, which is our media asset management platform, uh, Brio, which is our ingest and playout platform, and Amberfin, which is our uh, QC and um, Transcode platform. So we develop business solutions in production, radio, news, sports, program preparation based on these uh, three platforms and using a set of uh, applications, uh, media-specific applications that we have uh, developed over time, such as uh, ingest, studio production, transcoding, playout, graphics, editing, things like that. So in addition to developing our portfolio of applications and solutions, in order to uh, deploy a system, we have to integrate with a lot of third-party systems. So much so that uh, over time, we have developed uh, interfaces with probably well over 100 different third-party systems. And creating that way a sort of uh, Ecosystems, ecosystem of, of uh, applications that we integrate with. Um, but this is a challenge. Um, why is it a challenge or why is it even a problem? Because we devote far too much effort, energy, time uh, to developing this integration. Um, every, um, you know, whether they are fairly uh, sophisticated API based. Uh, integration or whether they are very simplistic file-based uh, integrations, first uh, they are the source of problems and also uh, they require a lot of attention and effort. So we view themes uh, as an opportunity, an opportunity to resolve that um, uh, integration uh, complexity um, through better and stronger standards. The idea is that um, if we, if interfaces, if integrations are built around standardized interfaces, they will be uh, easier to uh, develop, easier to maintain, and um, will benefit because uh, it will be easier for uh, other systems to integrate with our solutions, and will benefit because to integrate uh, the component of a third party uh, of another company would be easier. And of course, it will benefit us, the vendors, but also, of course, the uh, media companies. So what is FIMS? FIMS is a framework. The first component of the FIMS framework is a set of standard interfaces. The ultimate goal of FIMS is to provide plug and play interfaces. Some of these interfaces are fairly simple, like in the case of the transfer and transform services. Um, and some are more complex, in the, like in the case of the repository interface, mainly because it has more uh, operations and options. The other component of uh, the FIMS framework is the data model, and sometimes this is underestimated. I think this is a key to the power and potential success of FIMS. Um, FIMS provide a common representation for media assets. Um, an important aspect of that data model is that it is extensible, um, and you can use these extensions to incorporate into the data model uh, other standards, and that has been the case, for instance, with EBU Core, 
uh, that is used as the uh, native metadata model of, uh, of the film's data model. Um, finally, the, uh, the vision of the film's enterprise is to promote service-oriented architecture for the media industry. Uh, this means exposing media application as services and relying on SOI, SOI architecture to build solutions and this way to leverage standard IT technologies. SOA has been around in the IT world for at least 10 or 15 years and so to be able to uh, rely on the on the practices, on the best practices uh, developed for the IT industry uh, makes sense at a time where the media uh, applications, media solutions, more and more are IT-based solutions. Um, finally, it will allow um, uh, people to build um, solutions that are made of best-of-breed components. So that at the end, it's fairly um, easy to replace one of the components by another one using the standard interface. So by using uh, a common architecture framework, a common vocabulary and data model, um, by using standard interfaces, FIMS has the potential to create an ecosystem that will benefit both media companies and vendors. Essentially, this ecosystem will replace the proprietary ecosystem that I um, have shown at the beginning of this presentation. If I look at the benefits uh, from a vendor perspective, um, the idea is to, uh, FIMS will allow us to provide more elaborate integration at a lower cost and um, without having to uh, do a very low cost integration such as watch folders, which um, is very simple but creates a lot of uh, issues uh, for complex projects. Um, the other um, benefit, of course, is to reduce the number of custom interfaces. Um, and that mainly will reduce the cost of upgrading and maintaining systems with all its integrations. Uh, over time, uh, we spend a lot of effort to maintain, uh, over time, over uh, changes in versions, integration that we have done uh, previously. And it's not always... Uh, simple to pass that uh, cost to our customers. Um, finally, the idea is to devour, to, uh, to devote less efforts to the integrations and to um, spend more time investing uh, on core application, which are um, what we do as businesses. The benefits from the perspective of uh, media companies somehow mirror the benefits uh, seen from the vendor perspective. Um, I mentioned um, integration through watch folders that um, is uh, far from being the ideal solution. Um, the main issue from a, a user perspective is that uh, uh, it's difficult to track uh, whatever is going on. So themes will provide um, integrations that allow for better tracking, uh, better evolutions of system over time, and as well as um, uh, lower cost. Again, the idea is to reduce, um, you know, through well-defined interfaces, is to reduce the implementation and maintenance cost over time, and to allow a media company to take advantage of a new solution that would appear on the market, let's say a new transcoding uh, application, and to be able to integrate that new solution without to change the uh, whole system without to um, question the architecture, but just to uh, replace one component by another one. Um, there is no benefits without some cost and some challenges. Um, so FIMS is definitely an ongoing effort. A lot of work remains to be done uh, to complete that ecosystems of, um, of applications. Um, and this is an industry which is in constant change, so that makes it a little more challenging. Um, I will, um, you know, there's also cost on the vendor side that I will talk about in one minute. And um, 
Finally, I think it's important that you know um, broadcasters and media companies um, understand the constraints um, um, uh, associated with the adoption of themes. Uh, they have to agree to build on the standards and to understand that the standards do have limits. And basically, you know, can you live with these limits? From a vendor perspective, um, you know, the cost, um, I would mention cost more in terms of, you know, the technical effort necessary to expose um, application through themes interfaces. So I've said before, themes is both a data model and a set of interfaces. Uh, the data model is fairly rich. It takes uh, some time to understand and navigate through the uh, themes concept and operations. So there is definitely a learning curve to be able to um, do the work of uh, exposing an application as a themes service. But at the same time, most modern systems already have APIs or SOA-like architectures. So exposing a system as a theme service does not require a complete archi architectural change. Um, the other aspect is that the themes specifications include uh, extensive documentation, implementation guidelines, uh, reference implementation code to help the adoption of themes. And that should also reduce the effort, the cost of the effort um, to develop these uh, standardized interfaces. In more general terms, the challenges that are uh, associated with uh, that are associated with themes is that you know defining standards and that goes with uh, other standards as well. It's a slow process in an industry that change uh, quickly. Um, so themes it's still at, at, at its beginning and there are gaps, but the gaps are being recognized. Um, uh, themes 1.2 is going to be uh, released in the near future. Uh, it already addresses addresses some of these gaps and it provides additional um, services and functionalities. Um, so this is a work in progress. Um, the other aspect is that you know there is already many custom and proprietary interfaces that have been uh, um, put together by um, by vendors and their customers. So the adoption of themes is only going to happen uh, step by step. Uh, there have been a lot of um, effort and money invested into these custom interfaces, so they are not going to be dropped overnight. Um, again, the themes-based themes integration imposes constraints about what you can do and what you cannot do. The trade-offs um, trade between what it brings, mainly the standardization, the simplification, uh, the lower cost over time, and what you may lose, tight integration and performance. Um, basically, the uh, long-term benefits, um, you know, in order to, to take advantage of the long-term benefits, there are some short-term challenges because of that. Um, finally, but of course this is a biased uh, uh, perspective, uh, opinion, the uh, drive has to come from the broadcasters and media companies to uh, push for the adoption of themes in a broad way. Now, in order for the themes enterprise to work, um, you know, you have um, different actors who are going to rely on themes, you know, media asset management companies, uh, people who develop orchestration systems or workflow engines, they are going to, to rely on um, uh, connectors to control uh, themes, to control themes compliant services. So that will only work if indeed um, the um, interfaces that have been built by vendors are really themes compliant. The worst would be that <coughs> you expect to connect to a transcoding system or to a, a QC system. Uh, you developed a themes connector and you know it does not work. Um, the promise of the themes ecosystem is plug and play, but in order to do that, um, there should be a lot of attention paid to compliance. Um, one aspect of that is that, you know, as I mentioned before, themes, the themes data model allows for extensions, uh, but extensions should not be abused, otherwise they would lead to many distinct flavor of themes, and part of the benefits would be lost. Um, now, I think this is, uh, this is an understood challenge, and the themes community is developing a lot of mechanisms 
to validate uh, interfaces, again, to ease uh, the adoption in a wide um, way. I would like to um, end this presentation with an example of um, a practical example of how um, this ecosystem can, can work and, and bring uh, benefits. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the uh, presentation, part of the uh, uh, Dalet uh, platform is Brio, uh, which is our I.O. platform, basically providing ingest and play out um, uh, services. Um, we would like to promote and to uh, to promote Brio as a standalone uh, application, uh, as a standalone solution um, in the media market. And uh, in order to, to do that, it would be good to have an API, but we did not have a published public API to Brio. So we decided to implement a themes capture interface um, instead of inventing uh, a proprietary um, API. What is interesting in that effort is that um, when we were done, there was an immediate benefit that we did not anticipate at the beginning. Um, for us, in order to promote that um, Brio as a standalone uh, package solution, it would be good if there is you know, many applications around it. Um, and one aspect would be to connect it to an, to an Adobe Premiere um, editing uh, tool. So Adobe has been uh, interested in themes for a while. I'd actually developed an ingest plugin for Adobe Premiere. So basically, out of the box, for free, uh, we got an integration with Adobe Premiere by having developed um, a capture interface, a themes capture interface um, in our Brio uh, server. So this is the way um, how you know, this ecosystem is going to be built brick by brick and benefit the whole media industry at the end. Thank you.